cows. It's hard not to fall in love with them. But today, they're the source of a worldwide problem, which this scientist may just be able to solve. Trying to help people and the planet to, to survive, and we are doing things here that nobody has done before. It's one of the great success stories of domestication. It was some 10,000 years ago that people first tried to tame what was then a wild animal. Today, cows are raised as farm animals all over the world. But that very success has exacted a cost we didn't see coming. The world's surging population of cows is one of the reasons that our climate is becoming warmer. If we don't do something about it, it's only going to get worse, and it is getting worse. So we have to do something about it, and the time is now. Hermias Cabrab has been fascinated by cows since he was a boy growing up in Eritrea in East Africa. I really liked to drink milk, but there wasn't enough for everybody. And so it got me thinking, why don't we have enough, enough milk? And how do we uh, produce uh, enough milk? I was thinking about this, and then my father suggested that, well, you should study biology to try to understand how it all works. Hermias earned biology degrees in Eritrea and the UK. And in 2009, came here to the Davis campus of the University of California, where today he's looking at the way that cow biology is affecting our climate. Surprising as it may sound, cows are disrupting the delicate balance that makes our planet hospitable to living things the balance that regulates the Earth's average temperature. It all starts with the sun, which radiates heat to the Earth. Over time, that heat radiates back into space. But there are gases in the atmosphere that slow that process down. They're called greenhouse gases, and they keep the Earth warmer. Without the greenhouse gases, Earth's average temperature would be close to freezing instead of what it's been for the last few millennia, approximately 59 degrees Fahrenheit. But over the past couple of centuries, we've added a lot more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, further slowing the escape of heat and increasing the Earth's average temperature. One of those planet-warming gases is called methane, and cows turn out to be one of its biggest sources. All day long, they silently burp out methane, which makes its way up to the atmosphere. That methane originates in the first of the four compartments in a cow's stomach, the rumen. It's there that microbes, called methanogens, help to break down the tough grasses and other foods that cows eat. But that process releases methane, which travels up and then out of the cow's mouth. Of course, cows have always done this. So why is it a problem now? Because worldwide, we are now raising about one billion cows, and that adds up to an awful lot of methane. And we're raising hundreds of millions of sheep and goats and other animals that also churn out methane. Livestock farming isn't the only human activity that's pumping methane into the atmosphere but it ranks first on the list. 
That's why animal scientists, like Hermius, are working hard on finding solutions. In his work with cows, he's looking for a food that he can add to their diet that will reduce their production of methane. Okay, so the, the meal is ready now, and then... <laughs> and he's found one. Oddly enough, it's seaweed. You can see that the cows that have the seaweed, their methane emissions have dropped significantly. Where did he get the idea to try seaweed? From researchers in Australia. They found that adding a type of seaweed called asparagopsis to a cow's diet could knock methane production almost down to zero. But they only ran these tests with lab equipment that mimics a cow's rumen. For Hermius, that wasn't good enough. A lot of things work in vitro in the lab, but then when you take it to the real animal, it doesn't work anymore. So in 2018, he launched an experiment. He and his colleagues fed one group of cows a standard diet. In another group, they switched half of 1% of the diet to seaweed. They fed a third group 1% seaweed. And to make a food that most cows never eat more appealing to them, the team added a dash of molasses. They don't like the taste of the seaweed at first. It's pretty salty. After they start eating the molasses mixed with the seaweed after a while, they usually have no problem. To entice the cows to go into the device that measures their methane output, the team used another tasty incentive, alfalfa pellets. They absolutely love that machine because if they go there, they're going to get a treat. <laughs> That's why they do it. Twelve cows took part in the study, which ran for nine weeks. The results? The seaweed that had been so effective in the Australian lab worked almost as well in flesh and blood cows. These bars represent methane emissions. Uh, when you don't have any seaweed, it's quite high. So in this case, about 400 grams per day. And then you go down to about 300 grams per day, about 25% reduction. And then at the highest level of inclusion, we go down to about 150 grams per day. So we compare to the control, you have about 67% reduction in methane emissions. In another study with beef cattle, Hermias saw even better results. The reduction was up to 80%. We've seen 80% reduction in, in methane emissions. So to me, it's, that's just mind boggling. We are doing things here that nobody has done before. So that is contributing to the body of knowledge worldwide. Hermias hopes that his work here will have far-reaching benefits for everyone. Climate change is the biggest issue we have for this generation, and science is the tool that would help us reduce the impact and make it better for the next generation. Being able to look in the eye to, to your children and say, you know what, you know, we've, we've done something, we, are, we, we try to make it better.